Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to go over Niagara, skeletal meshes, and surfaces in Unreal 4. And for this video, we're going to use this fancy chest that I've made. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my effects folder. I'm going to right click, go to effects, and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty template. We're going to name it any, and then whatever you want. And then we'll open it up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to spawn something. So in a minute update, we're going to add a spawn rate and we're going to set that to something crazy like a thousand and we'll save it so it can compile. And then my emitter state, I'm going to set this to self just so you can see that I'm leaving the loop behavior to infinite. And then in my initialized particle, I'm going to make the sprite size mode to uniform. And then I'm going to make these a lot smaller to something like 0.1. And I'll save again so it can compile. Now under particle spawn, we want to click on plus and we're looking for location. And in here, you're going to see skeletal mesh location. Now, once you click on that, you're going to get a warning. And basically it's just saying, Hey, you don't have a mesh in here yet. You've nothing assigned. So in my preview mesh, I'm going to click on the drop down, and I'm going to add my skeleton. In this case, it's SK chess underscore one, and then I'm going to save it. Now it's not that a lot of these properties aren't worth noting, but the main thing right now to take note of are the mesh sampling type and the bone sampling mode. So under mesh sampling type, if we leave this at skeleton, it's just going to sample your bones. But if we click on that drop down, we have an option to choose surface triangles or surface vertices. In my case, I'm just going to do surface triangles. So there's a little more variance. And I'm going to leave this at random and I'll hit save. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see it. And right away, you can see that my particles are spawning on the skeletal mesh's surface. If we play this, you can see that they're spawning randomly. Now, the next question you might ask is how do we get our particle system to line up with our skeletal mesh and its animations? And it turns out that that's built in by default with the skeletal mesh location but we have to create a blueprint. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to create, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a Niagara system and I'm going to name this correctly just so it says NS at the beginning. And now I'm going to create my blueprint. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to blueprint class and I want an actor for now. And I'm going to name this BP and then whatever you want to name it. And then I'm going to open it up. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to add our skeletal mesh. And so I can get rid of that default scene root. I'm going to drag and drop that right on top of there. And then over in our details panel under mesh, we'll have skeletal mesh. And that's where we want to add our skeleton. So I'm going to add my SK chest underscore one here. I'll just compile and save it. And then I also want to change the animation mode. Now this is probably going to depend on the situation that you have. But for me, I'm going to change the animation mode to use animation asset. And under that atom to play, I have an animation that I've imported as well. And this is called atom underscore chest 01. Once you do that, you should see your animation playing right away and it's looping. I'm actually going to turn off looping and playing because I don't want that for the end result. I'll just hit compile and save. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add our Niagara system. So I'm going to add a Niagara particle system and in the details panel under Niagara system asset. This is where we want to add the Niagara system that we just made. I'm going to search for it and S skeleton and you should see that it's showing up right away. And if you wanted to preview what this looks like, you can come back to that skeletal mesh and you turn on playing for a second and you'll see that this is already working with it. It's attached to the skeleton. So we'll turn off playing for now. And now I want to go into my event graph. I want to set some things up. So I'm going to get rid of event actor begin overlap and event tick. And then I'm going to drag out a reference for my skeletal mesh. And then I'll drag off that pin and I'm going to type in play. Because I want to play an animation based on a keyboard press. And under that new atom to play, I'm going to click on that drop down. And I'm going to choose that atom chest underscore 01. 
Next, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna type in keyboard and I want a keyboard press for P. And I'm just dragging pressed to play. Just clean this up a little bit. And I'll move this out of the way. And the last thing I need to do is I need to actually enable keyboard inputs on this blueprint. So I'm gonna drag out from event begin play and I'm gonna type in enable input. And then once we have that, we need a reference to the player controller. So I'm gonna drag off of there and I'm gonna type in get player controller. And now we should be all set up. So I'm gonna click on compile and save. I'm gonna close out of this. So we set up our Niagara emitter so it'll work with a skeletal mesh. And in particular for our preview mesh, it was this SK underscore chest. And then after that, we created our Niagara system and we childed that Niagara system underneath of our skeletal mesh. That's what makes the system understand that there's a connection to this skeletal mesh. So I'm gonna drag this blueprint into the world. I'm gonna place it right in front of my player start. And I'm gonna hit play. And then I'm gonna get a little bit closer to it. And I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard. Yeah. Cool. So from here, you can go ahead and add any bells and whistles that you want to the effect. But this should cover skeletal meshes and surfaces. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.